What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. So today I'm talking to you about all things laser hair removal. I know you've thought about laser hair removal if you don't already get it done, so I thought I'd spill the tea on my experience with it and just talk a little bit about what I learned during my journey through the treatments as well as what I've learned after. <laughs> This year especially, I saw so many people starting their laser hair removal journeys and honestly it makes a lot of sense. We were all stuck at home, we weren't really seeing anyone, so it would be the ideal time to start. But in case you haven't started yet or you have just recently started and you wanted a little bit more insight into what the journey looks like, I thought I would share my personal experience with you. I do want to remind you that everyone's laser hair removal journey looks different. These are just some things that I have learned through my personal experience. So a little backstory about my personal journey. I started getting laser hair removal back when I was in university. I started in around 2015, 2016, and I did get it for two years. My treatments were spaced out pretty consistently throughout the two years, and I honestly have yet to go back for touch-ups, but I do need them. And the reason I'm talking to you about laser today is not only has the treatment become increasingly popular over the years, but I just wanted to mention some things that I've learned and seen and kind of noticed since my treatments that did happen quite a while ago. In terms of my personal experience with hair, I am Indian, I have naturally dark and thick hair and I'm not just talking about on my head or my eyebrows or lashes and you don't have to be South Asian in order to relate to that. I know so many people that have really dark, thick, coarse hair and it's not necessarily only like that on their head. Thankfully, I learned about laser hair removal when I was kind of finishing off high school and I decided I would wait a bit because laser hair removal is very, very dependent on what your hormones are looking like. So if you start laser hair removal when you're very young, there's a high probability and high chance that your hair is gonna continue to grow back after your treatment. Nonetheless, I wanted to wait until I was a little bit more stable and then the second I was able to get it done, I did. I got laser hair removal all over my body, every little nook and cranny. So one thing that is extremely imperative to remember is that when you are getting laser hair removal done, you cannot do anything but shave. So you can't wax, you can't use like an epilator, you can't use any sort of hair removal creams because those will take the hairs out from the actual root and you just need to take them out from the surface because you need to have a clean surface to use the laser on. If you have grown hairs that kind of interfere with the performance of the laser, you're not gonna have the best results but if you take your hair out from the actual root using like waxing per se you're gonna skew your results entirely so shaving is the main thing that you can do to remove any sort of hair between treatments that was one thing that impacted the performance of the laser on my hair. My laser tech wasn't always the same. I had a preferred laser tech, but there were times where she wasn't in and I would get a substitute. Each laser tech would have a different perspective on laser and they would have different practices that they preferred or they would just have a different flow for each treatment. And obviously getting comfortable with the laser tech is first and foremost a very difficult thing to begin with. So that's definitely something that I wish I didn't have to deal with, but nonetheless, my overall result still worked out to be okay. Um, I would just recommend for your own personal experience, definitely do as much research as you can before you actually select a laser tech or you select like a laser hair removal clinic. You just have to voice what you want from your experience. Just make sure you find a clinic that suits your needs and kind of cooperates and collaborates with you for what you're looking for. Another thing that I learned during my treatment was that you can't sweat for 24 hours after a treatment. You can't go to the gym, you can't obviously do any sort of extremely rigorous activity that's gonna cause you to sweat a lot, primarily because your skin is going to get irritated, your pores are open, your follicles are open, so you need to give your skin some time to heal. Just keep that in mind if you're someone that works out pretty often or just has a pretty active lifestyle that causes you to sweat, I guess. I'm someone who sweats really easily. I get hot very, very quickly and I work out six times a week, so I do sweat a lot. One more thing that you have to remember when you're getting laser hair removal is that you have to keep your sun exposure to a minimum, especially right around your treatments. So you obviously have to keep that in mind if you are someone that travels a lot or you're out in a sunny place or you live in a place that has a lot of sun throughout the year. Another thing that you might be experiencing if you're getting your treatments done already is that I noticed the laser accidentally activated certain follicles that previously were not active. This is a common thing that happens and I noticed this during my treatments, but I also continued to notice it in the years to follow. 
So what I mean by this is there are certain follicles, you know, throughout your body that might not already be active and you won't necessarily be growing hair in those specific areas. So for example, I was not someone that had any sort of hair on my shoulders, especially like the backs of my shoulders or even like right around the delt area, nor did I have much around my elbow. And then kind of throughout the process as they would do the laser hair removal all over my body they would go over those areas and i started to notice that hair started to grow in places that i never had hair before it's a very weird thing and it's honestly a frustrating thing to have to deal with too because you're hoping that this laser hair removal is going to take off all the hair possible but Sometimes it accidentally does the opposite in certain areas. However, it is totally fixable. When you're originally starting out in laser hair removal treatments, your hair is naturally gonna be more coarse than it would be at the end. So the laser is gonna respond really, really well to your hair and it'll just zap it up and zap it away, which is why you also see better results or a lot of drastic results in the earlier stages. Lasers respond so well to dark, coarse, and thick hair. For me, as I went on in my treatments, my hair became a lot finer and a lot thinner. It was still dark, but it was a lot finer, so it was more difficult for the laser to pick up. Make sure, just in case, just be extra, extra sure that you point out where you have tattoos to your laser tech. So laser and tattoos do not go well together. I think it's pretty easy and obvious to understand why, but just in case, your laser can totally burn your skin if you have tattoos and it can just really, really burn up and tear up the skin around the tattoo as well if you get too close. So that's something you wanna completely avoid and it's very important to have that area covered when you're getting your treatments done. If not, just you know, obviously point it out so that the laser tech knows to stay away from it. This is also interconnected. So speaking of burns, you can totally get burned by a laser hair removal machine, which is another reason why it is so important to communicate with your tech. Sometimes the sensation that comes out of a laser hair removal machine is painful and it also feels like it's hot. It feels like it's just like tingling or pricking. That's why it's so important to communicate back and forth with your technician. Sometimes you might confuse pain with heat or vice versa. Definitely let your tech know when you are feeling something that is very strong because there is a chance that the laser could just be too hot and if it's obviously not made a little bit cooler, you could actually have burns. Some of the takeaways that I'm super, super grateful for about laser though, it cuts your time in half when it comes to removing your hair or having to shave during your showers. It becomes a stress that you no longer have to worry about, which is absolutely amazing. And like I said, if your hair starts to grow back after your treatment stop or your hair was still there because it was so fine, it is most likely not going to be anything as bad as the way it was when you originally started. And again, that's just me speaking in terms of my personal experience. Not only does it cut your time in half, but it's also a confidence booster. I do hope that this video helped you and I hope you have a little bit more insight into what to expect or to look out for in your laser hair removal journey. And if you've already gotten laser hair removal and you've seen your own results and you have findings that you wanna share as well, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure they could help someone out and as always I'd love to learn from you as well thank you again for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so I can see you guys here next time I'll be back very soon stay safe stay healthy and stay happy